now, the greatest radio shows of all time. Suspense. The Shadow Node. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Classic radio theater. The Great Gildersleeve. Fibber McGee and Molly. Dragnet. Gunsmoke. The Lone Ranger. Now, step back into our time machine with your host, Wyatt Cox. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. We start off this hour in Dodge City, Kansas, for Western Adventure with William Conrad as Marshal Matt Dillon in an episode of Gunsmoke from April 25th, 1953, Matt and the Soldier. city and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun Smoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. say your name is, soldier? Gallagher. That's my name. All right, Gallagher. Now, don't you think you've had enough? It isn't even night yet. I'll never have enough. You plan to show up at the fort this drunk? Lady, maybe I won't show up at the fort at all. Now, what do you think of that? Gallagher, you better start worrying about what Captain Shaw's going to think, not her. Hey, what are you doing here, I've been an hour looking for you all over Dodge. How'd you get that drunk in an hour, anyways? Drinking! <laughs> Are you responsible for this? Oh, sure. The Indians pay me to keep you soldiers drunk. That ain't funny. He's a grown man, isn't he? That's not the point. What's the point? You shut up, Gallagher. We'll be an hour late now, and that's all Captain Shaw needs to Captain fix us. Captain Shaw can go hang. You wasn't so drunk, I'd leave you and just ride out alone. Yeah, that'd be just like you, Spear. Just like you. Come on, get up out of that chair. I'll drag you out. Oh, leave me be. Come on. I ain't have started here yet. That cut your preachers, gal. Thunder ain't rain. Shut up, Gallagher. Why don't you listen to your friend? You're just going to get into trouble here. Who's kissing your hand anyway? That's no way to talk. <laughs> Kill you for that. Beat your gunk. All right. You want the same treatment, soldier? Huh? I had nothing to do with it, Marshal. What? He was drunk. And you're cold sober. Of course I am. It's true, Matt. He just came in looking for him on the floor there, Gallagher. I'll take your gun, soldier. Well, oh, you can't do this, Marshal. All right, now pick up your friend. We're going to Matt, jail. Matt, listen to me. Gallagher started it. He was only trying to get him out of here. Back to the fort. He can take him back tomorrow. Fighting's against the law and Dodge. No, Matt. Come on, let's get going, soldier. Pick him up. The past week, we'd had nothing but trouble in Dodge. Men had fought and gouged and knifed and shot each other that I began to wonder if they gave a thought to anything else in the world. It had set my temper on edge, and I suppose I'd become as bullheaded as they were. Anyway, I threw the soldiers in jail and went off to supper and forgot about them. For some reason, the town was reasonably peaceful that night. The change sort of took the edge off of me. Next morning, I felt half human for the first time in days. I turned that cowboy loose early, Mr. Dillon. He seemed tolerably repentant. Well, he should be, Chester. But those two soldiers look pretty glum. 
What are you going to do with him, sir? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you better go back and let him out, huh, Chester? We'll have the army in here looking for him if we don't. Yes, sir. You've done your time, men. The law has forgiven you. Out you go, free as little birds. Oh. Oh, that sunlight will blind me this morning. We ain't about done our time, mister. In real trouble now. Mm. Oh, why do you say that? Because it's true. We were sent to Dodge to pick up supplies, not to go to jail. Now, you're not the first soldiers who've camped here overnight. Colonel Doby's a just man. Captain Shaw's in command right now, Marshal. Colonel went to St. Louis for a time. Well, I don't know Captain Shaw, but I'm sure... He's that... just about as reasonable as you are, Marshal. Just about. Uh, you're a spear, aren't you? And I was as sober yesterday, remember? I locked you up for fighting, not drinking. You locked us up. That's all that matters now. Spear's right, Marshal. I... Yes, I deserve what I'm going to get, but Spear don't. And nobody was killed. You're not going to hang. You don't know Captain Shaw. You can be awful hard. A little extra duty won't hurt you. First off, we'll be fined $10 by court martial. One month's pay. Yeah, that's a little high, I agree. There's nothing to what the cat might do on top of it. He's old army. They say one time he gave a man ten days' provisions and had him drummed out of camp with a straw halter around his neck and his coat turned inside out. And that was Indian country, Marshal, not around here. Well, the man's a scoundrel, that's what he is. Say, how'd the fellow make out, anyway? You'll have to ask Captain Shaw about that, if he knows. Well, the man must have done more than get drunk and fight. You won't get that kind of punishment. No, but close to it. Captain's dead set against liquor. Not a man in the company's been allowed to drop since Colonel Doby left. Is that so? Sure is. Look, Marshal, I got it coming, but Spear here, all he done was try to get me back to the fort. You, you got to try to do something about Never it. Never mind, Gallagher. He won't do nothing. The Spear, I guess I was a little hasty locking you up. I, uh, I'm sorry about it. So am I. All right. What can I do? Ride out and explain it to Captain Shaw. I don't like interfering in army matters. But, uh... All right, I'll do it. You will? Yeah, but I can't today. Well, tomorrow won't be too late. I'll be out there tomorrow afternoon. I don't know whether to trust you or not, Marshal. Then you'll have to find out if you can, Mr. Spear. Yeah. You can't blame him much, Marshal, but I sure hope you do. All right, boys, you're late enough now. You better get going. Come on, Spear. <laughs> While you're talking to Captain Shaw, I think I'll go see the sutler, Mr. Dillon. He's an old friend of mine. All right, Chester. Name's Larson. Been selling goods to soldiers for ten years that I know of. Say, I'll eat with him, too, in case you should get asked for supper. Oh, fine, fine. Hey, doesn't that look like Spear there? Where? Just outside the fort there, the man with the shovel. Oh, yeah. Say, what's he digging, anyway? Come on, let's ride over there. Spirit. You're too late, Marshal. Why? What's happened? We've already been tried, that's what. Well, what'd they give you? Two months' pay and a month's punishment. What punishment? I don't know, Marshal. The captain will work on that from day to day. He's got lots of ideas. Is this one of them? Digging that hole out here? This isn't exactly a hole, mister. It's a grave. A grave? 
Whose grave? Mine. Oh, now, wait a minute, Spears. Well, it's for me or somebody like me. That's what he said. Ask him about. Here comes the guard. I gotta keep busy. All right, I'll talk to you later, Spears. I won't be hard to find. <laughs> That's the whole story, Captain. I locked Spear up, too, and for no justifiable reason at all. He was fighting, wasn't he, Marshal? He was trying to get Gallagher out of there, that's all. I have already decided Gallagher's punishment will be the more severe. Yeah, but Spear doesn't deserve any punishment at all. Don't you see that? If I may ask, Marshal, what is your interest in this case? Look, I made a mistake, Captain. If I hadn't thrown Spear in jail, he'd be all right now. The man's been done an injustice. Not exactly. It'd been an hour late in any case. What? He and Gallagher had orders to report here to Lieutenant Adams at 6 o'clock. But at 6 o'clock, they were arrested in Dodge. If they had not been arrested, it would have taken them an hour to ride to the fort. Therefore, they would have reported in at 7 o'clock, one hour late. Oh, but Captain Spear spent that hour trying to find Gallagher. A soldier must learn to take care of himself, Marshal. Evidently, Spear hasn't learned. So it's my duty to teach him. Ah, this just doesn't make sense. I am a soldier, Marshal. You are a civilian. I wouldn't expect you to understand. Anybody can understand what's just. The Army has its own justice, Marshal. Like making a man dig his own grave? Oh, you saw him. Of course. Gallagher's digging one behind the fort. Why? Sentimental reasons, I suppose. Of mine, to be sure. What does that mean? It goes back a long way, Marshal. You see, I served under General Winfield Scott at Veracruz in 47. And I remember an order he once sent down. And it concerned soldiers who'd been found drunk. Now don't tell me General Scott had them shot. No. His idea was to impress upon the command that such a grave would be wanted sooner or later... Either for the drunken man or for some drunken companion. And did the soldiers understand that? Soldiers understand orders, Marshal. Or they can be made to. Tell me, Captain, what do you think Colonel Doby would do about this? In Colonel Doby's absence, I am in command of this company. Then Spear will be punished even though he's innocent, huh? This is an army matter, Marshal. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye, Marshal. Marshal Dillon. Huh? Yeah. I'm Lieutenant Adams. Oh, how do you do, Lieutenant? I'm the officer Spear and Gallagher were to report to night before last. Oh, yeah, yeah, the captain mentioned that. Uh... Tell me, how'd you make out in there? Uh, well, I don't think Captain Shaw and I understand each other completely. I knew it was hopeless. Thanks for trying, Marshal. Tell me something, Lieutenant. What's the matter with Captain Shaw? I couldn't say, Marshal. But he's been 30 years in the Army. So? Colonel Doby's been in 10. See. Will you join us at mess, Marshal? We eat in about ten minutes. Oh, thank you very much. I'd like to, if you don't mind. Sorry I can't offer you a drink. Captain's order. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, Lieutenant, when does Colonel Dobby get back from St. Louis? We haven't heard. Soon, I hope. Yeah. You see, Gallagher can take it. He knows he's guilty, for one thing. Spear I'm worried about. Already, he's not the same man he was. Yeah, I suppose he's lost faith in people. He was always a fine soldier. I just hope he can hang on long enough. No? Long enough for what? Oh, let's say long enough for Colonel Doby to get back before Captain Shaw drives Spear to something like... Yeah. Come along, Marshal. We'll wash up.
From April 25th, 1953, Gunsmoke on Classic Radio Theater. Now on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox, more of Gunsmoke, The Soldier, April 25th, 1953. <laughs> pretty busy the next few days, and there wasn't much time to think about Spear. But when I did think about him, I got to wishing I'd never let myself be hired for this job. Nearly a week passed, and then one day, about noon, I went to the office and found Kitty waiting there with Chester. I told her you'd be along any minute, Mr. Dillon. That's nothing serious, I hope, Kitty. Well, it could be, Matt. She wouldn't tell me a word about it. I offered to help, but no, she said. Uh, She'd wait until uh, you right, got here, right, and then... All right, Chester. Well, Kitty. Matt, uh, this morning, about 8 o'clock it was, oh, I was... Wait a minute. Hmm? Uh, Lieutenant Adams. Hello, Marshal. Jesse. Hello, Lieutenant. Uh, this is Miss Kitty, Lieutenant. Oh. Oh, yes, of course. I didn't recognize you, Miss Kitty. I mean, that. Uh... Uh, that's all right, Lieutenant. I'll be brief, Marshal. It's about Spear. He's deserted. What? Last night. Just before Chow. How'd you get away? Well, Captain Shaw hasn't had those men guarded very close. They're still digging graves, and with only one guard for the two of them. Spear took off when the guard was at the back of the fort near Gallagher. And so... What, have they found him yet? No. But the captain has the whole company out after him. I just posted a couple of men at the depot. Most everyone else is fanned out over the prairie, horseback. You think maybe the captain wanted him to run off, Lieutenant? Maybe that's why he made it so easy, huh? A lieutenant doesn't judge his captain, Marshal. But I'm worried about Spear. He might do anything now. Yeah. I knew you'd be interested, so I just dropped by to let you know what's happened. Well, thank you, Lieutenant. There's something else, Marshal. What? Captain Shaw has ordered me to search the town. Oh? He's sending me two more men. I hope you won't object. Well, ordinarily I would, but... Uh... I understand. Thank you, Marshal. Goodbye, Miss Kitty. Goodbye. Chester. Goodbye, Lieutenant. Matt, that's what I came to tell you about. Spear is hiding in my room. What? Since when? This morning. He showed up about 8 o'clock. Said he has to hide during the day. He promised to leave tonight. But why did he come to you? Well, he remembered I tried to keep him from being arrested that day, and he said I was the only person he could trust. Oh, I see. I don't know what to do, man. Is he armed, Kitty? Yeah. Yes, he's armed. And he said if anyone but me tried to get in the room, he'd kill him. He's awful desperate, Matt. Yeah. He's got to turn himself in, Kitty. After the way he's been treated... He'll catch him anyway, sooner or later. He's got to face this thing on his own free will. If he doesn't, it'll... It'll ruin him. Inside. He won't be any good again. You understand what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I think I do. All right, then go tell him. I can't, Matt. I'm not a man. He wouldn't listen to me. All right, I'll go. You can't. He'll shoot you as soon as you open that door. Well. Uh, look, you'll have to help us trick him, Kitty. No, please, Matt. He trusts me. You want to help him, don't you? Yeah. All right. Chester, go out and buy a big bag of groceries and hurry. Groceries? Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. We'll wait for you here. Stay off of your heels, Chester. You go ahead, Kitty. We'll be there when he opens the door. All right, Matt. It's me, Kitty. Open the door. I can't hold all these groceries much longer. All right, come on in quick. Take this. My arm's breaking. All right, I got it. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, 
close the door, Chester. Yes, sir. Come over here and take his gun away from him. I got it, sir. All right. April 25th, 1953, Gunsmoke. The conclusion follows these messages on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Here's Mike Lindell talking about getting your best friend something special. And Mike, you've done it again. You've brought us an amazing line of dog beds. This has been a long time coming. It starts with the same patented fill for your dogs now as we do my pillow. I wanted everything covered in sizes from your largest dog to your smallest dog. You can throw them in the washer and dryer. The dogs love it. They asked, and we, here they are. This is why you get the dog bed. This is the main reason. The dogs love it. And you've got that 10-year warranty, right? I can do it because the dogs love it. They don't want to wreck their bed. And you can get these MyPillow dog beds at a price lower than the big box stores, as low as nineteen ninety five. Call 1-800-928-4715, 1-800-928-4715, or go to MyPillow.com slash pet and use my promo code Wyatt. Treat your best friend to a MyPillow dog pet. MyPillow.com slash pet. Promo code Wyatt. Now on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox, the conclusion of Gunsmoke, the soldier, April 25th, 1953. All right, now get up. I said get up. Now sit in that chair. And don't try anything. I hope you're real proud, Kitty. Now wait a minute, Spear. Nobody's betrayed you. We're trying to help you, that's all. Why don't you just shoot me, Marshal, and have it over with? Spear, you've got a bad deal all around, but the trouble you're in right now is your own doing. You're the one put me in jail. I'm talking about your deserting. Well, what about it? I'm just telling you, you're responsible for that yourself. And you're the only one who can square it. Give yourself up. Give myself up? You mean you're not taking me in? I got nothing to do with it. This is between you and the army. Please, Spear, do it. He's right. You mean I can... You mean I can walk out of here right now? And you won't stop me? That's right. Why are you doing this, Marshal? Spear, I've been told that you're a good soldier. But right now you're in trouble. And you and I are both responsible for it. I shouldn't have thrown you in jail, and you shouldn't have deserted. Well, so? I'll do my part, and I think you'll do yours. You'll do yours by turning yourself in. I don't know, Marshal. Is... Yeah, what, Chester? Down there in the street. Lieutenant Adams and two soldiers, and they're headed right in here. Give myself up, huh? You got it planned pretty neat, Marshal. Maybe the Army will give you a reward for this, huh? Maybe they'll Adam the said he was going to search the town. That's all I know about. And followed you right here, didn't he? You sure trust me. All right, all. shut up a minute. Uh, Kitty, is that a closet there? Is it empty? No, well, almost, yeah. All right, Spear, I'll prove that I trust you. They won't find you till you're ready to give yourself up. Now get in that closet and hurry. You mean it? Here, take my gun with you. Now do you think I mean it? Your gun? Go on, but, take it. Oh, but I, I didn't mean Hurry up, get in there. Mr. Dillon, are you sure you are to take a chance like that? Open the door, Kitty. Oh, uh, I, oh, come in, Lieutenant. Wait here, ma'am. Well, hello, Marshal. How are you, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. Hello. Sorry to bother you this way, Miss Kitty. We're searching the town for spear, like I told you. Yeah. Well, I know, but... How'd you get here so fast, Lieutenant? Just a hunch. Guess it was a bad one. It sure was. Miss Kitty'd never hide a fugitive of any kind in this world, no matter Chester. what he might have done. Chester. Yes, sir. I hope you'll excuse me for bothering you, Miss Kitty. Oh, that's all right, Lieutenant. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. So long. All right, Spear, they've gone. You can come out now. Well? 
Here's your gun, Marshal. Thank you. We'll leave you here, and I'll send Lieutenant Adams back alone. That is, if you've decided. Okay, Marshal. Oh, that's fine. You're doing the right thing, Speed. Chester, give him his gun. Yes, sir. Here you are. Thanks. Come on, Kitty. Chester. Marshal. Yeah? I'll be all right now, Marshal. No matter what that captain thinks of. Sure you will, Spirit. Good luck to you. Thanks, Marshal. I thank you. There's Lieutenant Adams right across the street, Mr. Dillon. Uh, you and Kitty go on into the Texas Trail, huh? I'll join you later. All right, sir. Hurry back, Matt. Lieutenant Adams. Yes, Marshal. Where are your men? Oh, they're scouting the Alifraganza there. I don't think they'll find him, though. You don't? No, I don't. I see you got your gun back, Marshal. <sighs> you don't miss much, do you? I kind of wondered at first why you didn't have it upstairs, eh? And? Well, I don't suppose Captain Shaw would much appreciate an officer who searched a room, didn't even bother with the closet, would he? Captain Shaw might not, Lieutenant, but I think Spear will. You'll be waiting for me, Marshal? Mm-hmm. It was a mighty long chance he took. That was worth it. <laughs> Let me know how he makes out, Lieutenant. I sure will, Marshal. Especially seeing as how you kind of got a stake in him now. Well, so long. Goodbye, Lieutenant. I heard later that Spear was treated rough for the next few days, but that he took it fine. And then Colonel Doby returned to his command, and he decided that Spear had been punished enough. Two weeks later, Lieutenant Adams, accompanied only by Spear, was ordered on a scouting mission down toward the Cimarron. It may have been Indians, or it may have been the river. But neither man was seen or heard of again. Yesterday, I received a message from Colonel Doby. A formation is to be held at Fort Dodge, honoring those two good soldiers. The colonel thought I might want to be there. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Harry Bartell, Paul Fries, and Vic Perrin. Parley Bear is Chester, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. April 25th, 1953, Gunsmoke on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. We jump around a lot when we go to Pine Ridge, Arkansas to see what's going on with Lum and Abner. That's because we got gaps in some of the uh, storylines. But let's get to this one from April 25th, 1945. Uh, Lum and Abner brought to us, thank goodness, through the courtesy of our friend Ted at RadioMemories.com here on Classic Radio Theater. <laughs> Granny's Abner, I believe that's our ring. I know his lum, I believe you're right. Now see. Hello, John M. Downstore. This is Lum and Abner.
And now let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, as we look in on the little community today, we find Abner in the Jotham Down store making a phone call. Listen. Yeah, well, this is Abner Peabody, Miss Kim. <laughs> yes, Mom. I was calling to find out how Squire's Morning, getting Abner. along. Oh, excuse me. Never noticed you talking on the phone. Well, that's good. Uh, when will he be back from the hospital? I see. Yeah, well, uh, let me know just a minute he gets back, will you? <laughs> All right, Miss Kim. Much obliged. Goodbye. Now, howdy, Lum. Hi. When will Squire get back? Did she know? Well, a uh, doctor said if he keeps on doing as good as he has been, why, he might be able to come home in three or four days. I was hoping he'd get here quicker than that. Yeah. Of course, I don't see why you're so anxious for him to get back. The first thing he'll do is foreclose on them mortgages he's got on our places. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe. Three or four days, huh? Grannies, where are we going to raise any money by that time? Oh, I don't know. Well, ain't you worried about it at all? Well, yeah, natural I am, I reckon. You don't sound like it. If we can't pay them mortgages, you're going to lose your home. I'd think that'd worry you half to death. Well, I'm worried. Just look at them wrinkles up there on my forehead. Oh, you've had them for 20 years. I've been worrying for 20 years. Abner, you ain't got some money sort of saved up to take care of your mortgage, have you? No. No, I ain't saved up no money. Well, uh... You ain't got no place where you figure you might be able to get the money, have you? Uh, well, where in the world could I get that much money at, Long? Well, I just thought maybe you might have, well, maybe sold something. Sold something? Wait a minute, you ain't sold nothing, have you? Well, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, there comes Cedric up out there. <laughs> For the land sakes, what kind of outfits that he's got on? Look there, ain't oh, he got two hats oh, on his head there? Sight, ain't he? <laughs> oh, good, now he's mixed up there, I know. Come in, Cedric. Oh, let's see, now how's that go? Oh, yeah, oh, what can you spare that they can wear? Huh? That's the slogan of the United Nations Clothing Collection, and, and I'm collecting for it. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, here, Cedric, you ain't supposed to wear the clothes you collect. This drive ain't for you, you know. Well, of course not. Seems for the folks over in the countries they've been tore up by the war. There's millions of folks over there that ain't got enough clothes to keep them warm, even. Well, I ain't keeping them. I'm just wearing them whilst I'm out collecting them. Just trying them, sort of. No. Uh, Want to make a better impression on folks. Well, you ain't going to make no impression on nobody wearing two hats that way. That looks silly, Sam. Well, I, I couldn't make up my mind which and I looked the best in, so I just wore both of them. <laughs> Uh, have you fellas got any clothes you can tribute? <laughs> yeah, we ought to have something around here, I reckon. Uh, what kind of clothes do they need to wear, Cedric? Ooh, just about every kind. Just so as they got some wear left in them. Yeah, naturally. I've got a list here. Somewhere to put it here. I'll read it to you. Yeah, yeah, let's see what they're wanting there. Infant's clothing. Yeah. Whatever that is. We ain't got none of them. I wore mine out a long time ago with them. Oh, uh, let's see. Coats and dresses... Aprons for women and girls, suits and overcoats and work clothes for men and boys. Well, we can help out there, I know. Shoes in good repair, and woolen socks and gloves, caps and canided headwear. What kind of headwear? Let me see that, Cedric. There it is right there, canided headwear. I'll be dead blame, that's what it says. Huh. Look at there, Long. Yeah, let's see that. Do they mean them helmets with them little doors in front like the knights used to wear? Oh, no, Sally. That ain't canided. That's knitted headwear. Knitted? Yeah. Oh, they just spelled it wrong, huh? <laughs> well, that's the right way to spell it. Ah. Uh, well, Cedric, why don't you look around in the feed room back there? There ought to be some more work clothes there we can spare. Yeah, sure. Look around, Cedric, and take whatever you can find back there. Yes, Mom? Uh, don't take my hat, though. That's the only one I've got. Oh, no, Mom. I know it when I see it. I won't. I got a pair of shoes over at the house I don't hardly ever wear. They might just as well be where they can do somebody some good, I reckon. I'll tell Cedric about yeah. that. That one pair of shoes can make a whole lot of difference to some man in Belgium or France or Holland or someplace. Make a difference any place if you never had none. Yeah. I read summers that almost as many people over there have died from exposure on account of not having enough clothing as them that starved to death. Yeah, only trouble is I just think and they'll have to find somebody that's got one flat foot, though, if I give them away. Flat foot? Yeah, see, them shoes I was talking about was the ones that they built an arch to sport in uh, Lefton. Oh, well, don't worry. Just so they got good soles on, that's the main thing. 
Somebody can make mighty good use of them. No, sir, I believe it was the right shoe they built that's so sporting. Let me see now. Oh, which is the foot I have trouble with, Long? Well, I don't know. Them's your feet, not mine. See, let me walk across the floor here once. I can find out. Well, if you want my old opinions, that foot trouble of yours is mostly in your head. Doggy, that's cuter. Both of my feet hurts now. I'll have to have that sports built into both of them, I reckon. Well, don't worry about it. Whoever gets them will find out which one's got their sport in it. Mom, I don't want my foot's giving me trouble. I just can't stand it. Well, I found a few articles back there. Sure, I'm much obliged to you fellas. Oh, that's all right, Cedric. We're just proud to help out. You bet your life we're. Yeah, be sure and stop out the house and ask Elizabeth for some more stuff out there. Yes, Mom, I will. I'll see you fellas later. So long. Yes, yeah, so long, Cedric. That boy, he's doing a good job going yeah, around that way. Yeah, I see him doing such a thing. Abner, getting back to that other stuff we was discussing about money. Money? Yeah, different ways how a fella might raise it by selling stuff and such as that. Yeah, uh, well, I gotta make a deal ever now, Long. Well, you don't have to make them right away, do you? Oh, yeah, I'm late. They're all put up. Miss Seastrunk's done called up once already, wanting to know where our grocers is at. Better get my coat here and get right to that right now. Yeah, I reckon so, if you got to. Just like that old letter saying of yours, don't never put off nothing that you never put off yesterday. Or, uh, hey, where's my coat? I don't know. Ain't it hanging up on a nail back there? There ain't a thing hanging up back here but uh, our hats. All right, doggies, wait a minute. I know where that coat's at, too. That dad blamed Cedric taking everything he seen back there. <laughs> Lucky thing I had mine owner he'd have taken that, too. Which way'd he go along? I don't know. I never paid no attention. Well, I've got to find him. Well, he might have headed over towards your place. As long as you told him to go there. Yeah, more than likely, that's where he went. I'll, I'll go right on out that way right now. Uh, why don't you call a barbershop, Lom, and tell uh, Moles there to stop Cedric if he sees him coming down that way. Yeah, all right. Uh, hey, wait a minute. Ain't you going to take the deliver? No, I'll get to him later. i got to hurry up now. Get on the phone there and call Moles. I'm doing it right now. Yeah, I'll be back directly. All right. Hello? Is that you, Moles? Uh, this is Lom. Oh, Tolliver, well, how's yourself? Ah. Uh, say, uh, Cedric ain't come in there collecting clothes for the clothes drive, has he? Uh, well, if he does, send him back here, because he got off with Abner's good coat. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, by the way, Mose, Abner ain't been down there spending money lately, has he? Ah. Uh, on shampoos and such as that, huh? Ah. Uh. Oh, no reason at all. Well, be sure and send Cedric back. Much obliged, Moles. Goodbye. Oh, my goodness. Hello, Mr. Long. Uh, I'm back again. Yeah, I see you. Oh, well, I forgot something. Oh, well, I'll be glad you did, Cedric. Did Abner find you? No, Mommy, never, but I forgot I was aiming to buy some peanut butter. Well, wait just a minute. I'll wait on you. Hello, Miss Kemp. This is Lum Edwards. Yes, Ma. Uh, say, when Abner called you a while ago, do you know if he was interested in buying any real estate or anything like that from Squire? Not that you know of, huh? Well, uh, all right. Much obliged. No, it's nothing important. Sorry to have bothered you. All right. Goodbye. Goodness, now, I'm sure you was wrong about... That money deal, Cedric. Money deal? Yeah, that junk you told me about over here in Abner sell a diamond to Hazari for $5,000. Well, I did hear him. Oh, you couldn't have. Done a little checking up around here since then. I ain't found no evidence nowhere that Abner's got any money. Well, I heard it, though. But can I get my peanut butter now? Oh, yeah, just a minute, though. You better look through that bundle of clothes you got there and find Abner's coat. That was his good coat you taken back there a while ago. Well, it never looked like it to me. Well, it was, though. Better get it out of there. It was Blue Surge. Well, it's going to be a little hard to find. All of them I collected was Blue Surge. Let me see down here now. Does this in here look like it? I don't know. Give it here. Maybe I can find something here in the pocket that'll tell whose it is. This small. Here, I'll help you look. Nothing in this pocket. What's these things here, Mr. Long? Ah. Uh, oh, them are money order receipts. Oh, wait, here we are. Here's a letter here with Abner's name on it. Yeah, this is his coat, all right. 
Now, you better take it back in the feed room and hang it up. This one? Reckon Mr. Abner would care if I took these old receipts to play with? I know, I reckon. Wait a minute. Did them money order receipts come out of Abner's pocket? Yes, Mom. There's a whole stack of them here. Look here. Must be 45 or 50 of them. Wait a minute. Let me see the date on them things. Well, I'll be dead blamed. They're all $100 ones. And he just bought them yesterday. Grannies, I, I can't hardly believe it. Well, where in the world did did uh, Abner actually sell a diamond? Or did he... St- I don't know. It, you never quite know what's going on with Lum and Abner. Though you know you can find all the shows from Ted at RadioMemories.com. He has programs, not just Lum and Abner, but others, available on cassette, CD, or flash drive for your computer. RadioMemories.com. My webpage is classicradio.stream, where you can stream our classic radio shows on demand. You can learn about building a classic radio collection of your own. You can find sites that have our shows available by a podcast. You can also uh, find, as I said, our social media links. And you can buy me a copy to help us maintain our distribution channels and to acquire additional classic radio collections. We're doing that all the time. That's at classicradio.stream. Thanks for tuning in. Tell all your friends the great radio shows are right here at this spot on the dial. Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite radio station.